I'm going to use this funnel as uh, the main supply and then I'm going to use this one as a standby supply. They are all three feeds with neutral. We are going to use this contactor for our main supply and then we are going to wire the standby supply through this contactor. So we have L1 and the output is T1. We have L2, the output is T2. Then we have L3, the output is T3. Okay. Then we also have a pair of normally closed and normally opened contacts here. So we have to test to be sure which is which. 13 and 14 is normally open. And then 21 and 22 is normally closed. So we are going to use 1, 2, 3 for our three lines and then this 13 and 14 will be used for our neutral connection. Okay, so let's go. I'm using brown for line one, yellow for line two. This is actually yellow and green, but I'm using it for line two. Blue for line three, black for neutral. Okay, these are also the main cables from our standby supply. I talked about interlocking when I was explaining the drawing of the whole arrangement. So we we'll take line one from here and it will come and pass through contact 21 and 22 before it will come back to connect to the coil. Okay, so we add it to this cable. I will have to remove this neutral wire for now. Later I'll connect it back. Okay, so I'll put back my neutral wire. Don't forget the same thing applies to the standby contactor also. The live wire that will go to energize the coil will have to pass through the normally closed contacts of the contactor for the main supply. Power from the standby contactor. I have to remove this neutral first. So from L1 on the standby contactor to terminal 21 on the main contactor. So we bring back a neutral line from terminal 22, normally closed on the standby contactor to one of the terminals of the call, either A1 or A2. And that will be for live, that will energize the main contactor to A2 on the main contactor. Okay. So we'll have to bring neutral from the main supply to the other terminal. We have our main neutral here. So we take the loop and then passes here to terminal A1 of the coil on the main contactor. We take the other side of the normally closed terminal on the main contactor, terminal 22, and then we bring it to one of the coil contacts on the standby supply contactor, terminal 22, and we send it to one of the terminals of the coil on the standby contactor. All right, then, we bring neutral from the main neutral that is coming from the standby supply and we send it to the other terminal of the coil on the standby contactor. So we look from main neutral here to the second terminal of the coil on the standby contactor. We are left with the connections to our lamps. So I said green for main, blue for standby. 
So first of all, we are connecting the lamps, and so uh, let's concentrate on the main contactor first. So we are taking our neutral from here. in here so then live wire same thing will be done here take neutral from here The supply to the lamps should actually be taken from the input side of the supply. This policy. We can actually use any of the feeds. Okay. Right. Okay, so now we are left with the connection of the output to our consumer unit. From the changeover switch to our consumer unit, I'm using red for line one, yellow for line two, and then blue for line three black for neutral this is red and it comes to red here that goes to the consumer unit so here we are going to bridge these two together okay we go to yellow t2 the output of L2 and then it goes to consumer unit last T3 output of L3 we bridge it with L3 here and then it goes to consumer unit So soon, step by step, we are done with our changeover switch. All right. Last but not at least, our neutral to bridge 14, we bridge 14 to 14, and it goes to consumer unit. So now we have our line one, line two, line three and then neutral to our consumer unit. So here we can cover our changeover switch. Okay. Okay, so now let's go into the consumer unit then do our connections then we come to yellow yellow to yellow then we come to blue blue to blue then we come to neutral Alright, so this is the change of our switch and everything here is done automatically. The only manual aspect of this system is when you have to switch on and switch off the standby supply. So all the switching is done automatically here. This will tell us when the main supply is available. Then this will tell us when we are using the standby supply. I said earlier that I am using this panel to represent our main supply and then I'm using this second one to represent the standby supply. 
And so this is how it goes. When the main supply is available, automatically it switches to your consumer unit, which is connected to your loops. And so this represents our loops. And so it's count. Now, when this main supply is off, it goes off. The load will not function. But then you have a standby supply. And so what you do is that you go to the standby supply. If it's a generator, you switch the generator on, and then automatically the changing is done from the main supply to the standby supply. Now, what happens here is that when you are using the standby supply, and then the main supply is restored, this is what happens. And so here, this light tells you that the main supply is restored. Meanwhile, the standby supply is also on. And so what you need to do is that you only have to go and then switch your standby supply off and automatically the changeover is done to connect your main supply to your loads. Thank you very much. Continue watching my videos. If you have not subscribed yet, I want to encourage you to do so, so that you will be able to get connected to get all the videos that I will be uploading in future. Thank you very much.